Hey everybody, I want to introduce you to a very good friend of mine. His name's Jason Cisneros. He, he founded a bunch of companies, but his newest venture is Built to Exit. I'm going to let him tell you about that. But before I do that, we met because we were helping children that were trafficked. Jason is not only an amazing entrepreneur who's actually built and exited companies, not like the guys say on Facebook or whatever fake stats they want to throw, these coaches and gurus, Jason actually has done it. And, but beyond his accomplishments in, in business, he's just a great human being that really cares for others and actually helps. I think it couldn't have worked out any better that you're on today, Jason. So welcome. Thank you so much. Glad to be here, brother. Tell us a little bit before we get into the chaos that is in the world and, and how to function as an entrepreneur through it and, and maybe taking some of our power back. Talk to us a little bit about Built to Exit. It's the culmination of my entire career. And we're going back lots and lots of years, lots and lots of businesses. I started my career in business. I actually started in, in a really broke family. And my adopted father went to prison when I was 17 for attempted murder of me and my mom. I was delivering drugs at 12 years old. There's, that's where I come from. And my story is my story, but it's everybody watching has a story. And the issue is that we find each other, we find our humanity and the things that bring us together. We find it in our stories because we find out no matter how hard you dig, you're going to find some people that are having a hard time and, and have had a hard time. Very few people have silver platter. They're not yeah. going to be our friends probably if they had a silver platter. <laughs> no, definitely not. We don't, we don't tend to, we don't tend to attract those people into our lives, but I found my way out of that lifestyle because of small business. It was men and women, giants before us that laid that groundwork to make it okay. I got a kid that was that had a criminal background, didn't graduate high school, a, a nobody from nowhere. And there's this amazing opportunity for me to learn the principles about how to be a better man, right? how to be a better husband, how to be a better father, how to be a better servant, because that's what business is all about falling in love with somebody else's outcome and overcoming all of your weaknesses to be able to serve that group of people with whatever it is you do outside of yourself, right? Anybody yeah. that's selfish in business, you don't last very long. It just doesn't work. And so it was through that journey that I was able to, like I said, my first few businesses were massive failures because I didn't learn the skills. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I could sell like a mofo because I was desperate. <laughs> you know, I got rent and I got payroll and desperation. Desperation is a really great motivator sometimes. I was going to say, it's a great teacher. It taught me yeah, a lot. It is. And, and which is what I see with a lot of businesses these days that people try to outsell their problems. And you really, we'll talk a little bit about what, how that evolved into built to exit here in a second. But I, I failed those first three and it was dominoes. It was like, boom, they were all mm -hmm. connected as the same time frame. And it took me a while. If anybody doesn't, if anybody's ever gone through the the pain of a uh, bankruptcy, it's very personal. It's very personal because, uh, you know, I have a saying now: I am not my business is not me. But back then, my business was me. It mm -hmm. was my identity. It was my value. It was my ch chest puffing. All of the crap, right? It was yep. so tied into me that when it failed, I failed. And then when I failed, I became a failure. And so that took me about six years to come back from just the psychological damage that it did, much less $2 million in debt, being embarrassed, going through a divorce, all the stuff that it caused. It was like a, it was like a tsunami through my life. And, and then when I got back on the trail, I got a chance to go on the road with Tony Robbins. It was a real blessing. And a lot of people go to work with Tony and they're like, they're in it for the celebrity or whatever. I, I knew he had access to people that I would never, ever be able to get close to. Mm -hmm. And that's why I loved working for him. It put me in proximity to people that were amazing business owners, right? Yeah. Some of the greatest business minds of our time. And I took that time to take my three notebooks that I had when I was going through my failures mm -hmm. and I would go out and I would beg them. I would be like, I'll come take your trash out. Like I'll come wash your windows. I'll come cook yeah. you breakfast. I don't care. Can I get 15 minutes of your time to see what you would have done about this? Yeah. So after a few years of being with Tony, I ended up with three new notebooks 
and then went back out. I was started a career as a turnaround specialist, fixing other people's broken businesses Yeah, because I knew exactly what not to do. <laughs> and Sometimes I had all this, need. yeah. And I had all this great new information on how to do it. And then I made everybody else a lot of money. And then I started buying my own companies again. Nice. And that brings us to about to February of 2019. I sold, I uh, had a massive exit of mm -hmm. a multitude of my companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things we started many years ago was a consulting firm called Anton J. We were trying to help companies understand how to prep themselves up to sell so I could buy them. Yeah. Because there was a massive misunderstanding because of business brokers who don't know really what they're doing, overpricing. And, and I, I just couldn't buy anything because the numbers never worked out because they had some inflated number. And, and so finally we were like, I'm going to write a book for business owners to tell them how to understand their valuation. And I'm going to start uh, a consulting company to help put stories in that book so that it makes a lot more sense. And, and so that consulting company has been going now, I think we're in our 15th or 16th year at this point. It's been very nice. wildly successful. I had a great team of people that run that business. And, and so when I sold in 2019, obviously I was doing undercover rescues of kids. That's mm -hmm. how you and I came across each other. And you funded a couple of the things that we were working on, you and your group of people. And, and I was doing a lot of work with domestic violence and feed a billion. We were feeding people. And, and then the world started to fall apart. Yes. And, and it was my, it was like, I was properly financed to be able to do things about it. Yeah. So I traveled the country and fought back against mandates and shut down the Golden Gate Bridge with Lee Dundas and been all over with George, with uh, General Flynn and some cool stuff that I was able to do because I properly exited my businesses. And I'm like you, we can see there's so many fake gurus out there. Very few of them have ever sold a business. Very few of them actually even really own a business because they're say. just marketers. Yep. And that's, look, I don't, you know, however people feed their family, I don't judge them. But it's when you take another man or another woman's business into your hands, that is a sacred relationship because that business is the thing that feeds their family. It is yeah. the thing that puts a roof over their head and messing around with it because business owners are a target because of excess cash and they have hopes of doing things better and they have hopes of selling. And that's where I, that's where I, I'm a defender. I've got this reward or this award behind me that was given to me in the domestic violence world by the women that I've, that I've helped in that world. And they call me the shield. And it's because you and I have something in common. We hate bullies. I hate them. And I can't stand when business owners are bullied, which mm -hmm. happened during 2020, 2021, when we got called non-essential. Yep. And so I thought I was out of the fight, brother. I was like, I'm done with my business life. I've done my stuff and I have a great consulting team with, or a great consulting firm with a great team that runs it. Mm -hmm. But I started thinking about it after like Joe Rogan started getting into the Patriot fight and started, you know, Elon Musk bought Twitter and we started to see the FBI was, you know, dinking around like all of the stuff that was conspiracies. That's now true. There was bigger voices than mine came along to support that journey. And so I sat back with my wife, Emily, and I said, what's God really calling me to do? What do I, what can I do to assist in easing suffering? Besides, we'll always do the stuff with the kids. We'll always do stuff to me. But what can I do like with my life experience? And so we started playing around and I reached out to a couple of my mentors and they said, Jason, you really need to help the small business community, small and mid-sized companies. Yeah. And I was like, man, that, I just thought I was out. And so I started looking around. I did some research. I found out that we got called non-essential. And we do 60% of the GDP, 60% yep. yep. of the GDP. We do over 60% of the hiring and 60% of $27 trillion. That makes us bigger collectively than most countries, Yeah. than all businesses, right? It makes us bigger as a group. And I started to see, oh, we don't hang out with each other. No, we don't, we don't, we're busy running our businesses. And the government, our corrupt ass government 
coordinated with big businesses like Walmart and Amazon and those Big businesses book. and shut us down and said, Oh, I'm going to go buy a bunch of stock in Amazon. Cause I know they're going to get a bunch of business during this. And so I started to get pissed brother. I was like, all right, all right. I can see a fight now. I can yeah. see a fight coming. Yep. And, and so I've noticed all great countries fall when the merchants are eliminated mm -hmm. and you can go back all the way to the beginning, right? merchants that's entrepreneurs now small business owners whatever but we are merchants mm -hmm. and and in order to be a, a merchant and to be able to stay in business with the guardrails of our constitution and when some of the documents that come came along the way like in 19 um eight, sorry 1890 with the ftc act the original ftc act yeah. those are some things that never happen and so you see a country that of merchants that we make things better. Who do you think is sending money to North Carolina right now during the hurricane? It's business owners, it's Amer American citizens, it's it, our government sent all of our money off to other countries and FEMA is now out of business, they're out of money. Yeah, 750 a person. 750 you lost your family, you lost everything you ever built, here's 750 bucks. Yeah, and, illegal, and illegals are getting $9,000 per head at a minimum. You've got all these billions going on. And again, America should help where it can. I'm not angry that we help. I'm angry. And to be honest with you, to be angry about things that you can't do anything about is a waste of time. So what can I do though? And what we are doing, and to bring you back to the original question you asked me, what is built to exit? It's a simple concept, right? That if any business owner hears the, the sound of my voice, our tagline is everybody exits. How? matters yes think about that for that. a second i right? know it. right inside and out everybody exits it. whether that's death or the worst part is an involuntary exit i had three yes. of those bad boys <laughs> where my companies went out of business because i didn't have the skills i've had the second type of exit which is really it's dictated to you how you're going to exit yeah. And then I was like, you know what, when I made my comeback, I was like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to custom tailor my exit, which yeah. is exactly what I, I missed it by one month. I wanted to do it by January of 2019. It happened in February, but it was, but it, but that's what we do at built to exit because oh, everybody, if you and I had a hundred conversations with a hundred different business owners, mm -hmm. they're going to have a different idea for themselves of what exit means. Some of them are going to love their company and want to keep it forever, but they, their exit is a version of, I want to get my personal time back. I want to be able to leave for a month and have it still there. Yeah. Some people's exit is, I want to get this ready to hand off to my children. Some people's exit are, I'd like to take, I've built a $30 million business. I like to take 15 of, of that off the table, diversify my investment and maybe have a, a partner. And so as I started to look, nobody's really teaching that everybody exits. Yeah. I've seen the involuntary, right? We, we got called in several times on the consulting side where people drop dead at their desk and the family has no idea how to run the company. Yep. You know what I mean? And so we were able to help, but I know that happens and people don't know about us and they don't call to, for us to come and help. And they're left with real debt, with real yeah. tax implications, with houses that get taken. That's not how we want to leave our family. No. And so when we start talking about exiting, nobody's really talking about it. Everybody, you hear these yeah yous and that yahoos out there and they're like, yeah, you can buy businesses and flip them. Shut <laughs> up. Yeah. Like shit, flipping businesses is the stupidest idea I've ever heard because you don't flip a business. Yeah. You don't, you can fix it, turn it around and then sell it. But there is an immense amount of skill set that comes along with that. And we're immense. Good. And then they're like, you can buy a business with no money down. Okay. So now you have an inexperienced business owner. That's uh, the, the experienced business owner that owns a business who doesn't know how to exit. And you have an inexperienced business owner coming in to buy it. And they're like, yeah, no money down. You're just going to pay me $50,000 a month until my $3 million is up and et cetera, et cetera. And then the other owner goes out. The other new owner comes in. All the people leave, all the customers leave, and now everybody's screwed. This is the stuff that I'm watching happen in front of my eyes 
for people who don't know what they're doing. God bless them for trying. God bless them for feeding their family for a couple of months by being able to, to lie to people. But you're hurting business owners and you're hurting yourself. Yep. And it's the same group of people. They're always on each other's stages. They're always on each other's podcasts. They're always because they pull from the, the pool of the ignorant. And I don't mean stupid, ignorant people that are, have genuine hope in their heart. They pull from that pool because yeah. 95% of companies fail. There's always yeah. some new sucker to come in to these events that they throw and to go to their events and to read their books and to go to watch their podcast and go, there's seven steps to blah, blah, right? And I understand it. Yeah. But why, why I built to exit was to fight back for our community. And more importantly, like this is a five-year project for me, for us to band together. Like number one, I want, I want to train business owners how to run and build a really great business for their exit. I also want to take a lot of people that are business coaches and business consultants yep. and teach them the right way to do this from a holistic perspective. Yeah. I want them to win. I want our one of one model is for us to build companies to exit. The other one is to build million dollar consultants, right? That's what I want to do because if we all learn the right stuff, our community thrives. It gets better and it gets bigger. It gets more powerful. And I'm not doing what I'm doing to be in the consulting business. I'm not, I'm doing it to build a community of some of the best smartest, kindest, most sacrificial people I know who are business owners. I want us all to band together and we can do that in the built to exit community. So really it was in the title. Like I said, with my mentors, we, we have systems, we have processes. I know how to take any business from where it is to, to a minimum of a $30 million sale. We've done it over and over and over again with myself, with my businesses, with other people's <laughs> business, with Anton J, which is the, my umbrella company, yep. but built to exit is specifically for business owners and for business consultants and coaches to get better at what they do. I love it. Long winded answer, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but people need to know this stuff, right? Yeah. I could tell you from my gym experience, right? When we first started, when I first met you, I got involved with the gym. I remember how many phone calls I had. Hey, Jason, what would you do here? Right. That was a six hundred thousand dollar hit yep. to me personally. Yep. I don't mind sharing that information right. because it's very important that people understand we fail more than we actually succeed. Ninety five percent, brother. It hasn't yeah. changed since the SBA started making the measurement yep. every year. Yeah. It's crazy, right? So I can I know what a dark place that can lead to, right? You feel like yep. your world's caving in. And the only reason why I did not go under personally was because I built integrated the way I did. Mm -hmm. And I had that skill set that transferred to integrated, but was not really transferable to the gym in the way that I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it was two different, it was two different client pools. I would never, ever looking back at it, focus on a consumer if my main business is focusing on other entrepreneurs. Right. So like I have that little black notebook of all those mistakes that I've made. <laughs> all right. And I got to tell you, that's how you get better. That's, that's how, how you, you get, get better. better. You step on the landmines, you clear the way, you figure it out and you keep moving forward. What were some of the things that you learned that you can share with us in some of those setbacks that you had? I would tell you perspective is so important. I do a podcast um, live on Twitter every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And it's live. It's like a radio show. And I do about 45 minutes to an hour of content. And then we have a conversation with whoever's all the business owners that are in the room. It's a really fun thing. And I will tell you that what I do on those podcasts is perspective shifts. Because until your perspective, like, you can't change your behavior or you won't sustainably over time until mm -hmm. your beliefs shift. Yeah. And so one of the perspectives, why I called the, this new division built to exit is because it goes, Oh, everybody exit how matters. So yeah. I'm going to exit everybody. Why everybody that owns a business, you're going to exit. Yeah. Whether that's a casket or on a yacht, yeah. it, it's up to you. 
Yeah. And so the, now you start thinking, oh, I'm really building an asset. I'm building an asset. And just yeah. a car, a home, anything, a, a painting, like you buy yeah. things that when you go from ignorant about money and wanting to be rich, you shift over into wealth building understanding. Yeah. And so that wealth is built by assets. And those assets should appreciate over time, not depreciate. Correct. And they should be able to not have you be part of the equation for it to be appreciating. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I started to look at what are the, the foundational principles? What are the found perspectives that need to shift? And so we came up with the core four, right? We trademark TM. <laughs> and so the core stands for C is your culture. Right. It's a, it's, it is building a team and having a management team that you're not necessary in. Okay. Yeah. End game is crucial in that who buys businesses. Okay. And if you want to know who buys businesses, that's the best in the business, they're private equity firms. Yep. Okay. About 8,000 of them worldwide. They have about $10 trillion available to them here in the United States. They have about, 4 trillion of that. Okay. And they have in bank accounts, 1.5 trillion of what they call dry powder, which just means it's cash sitting in a bank account Get looking ready. for businesses to buy. Yeah. And they're the best in the business at what they do. You have a That's business broker, do. which most of them are idiots and you have a private equity firm. Okay. There's some good business brokers. I don't want to cast disparagement over all of them, but most of them are terrible, but private equity firms best in the business. And so if I'm a business owner, I realize that what I'm building is not a therapy. It's not a someplace to go to solve my mommy and daddy issues. I'm building an asset. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to know is who buys these companies? How do they buy them? Yeah. Okay. And what they buy they them mean? with four key components in mind. Number one is you cannot be needed as the owner. That means you have to have a management team in place. Number two, they want to know the relationship to the customer, okay? Because if you leave and your customers are only doing business because they love you, yeah. then the business goes out of business, right? Yep. They want financial clarity, number three, which means that you have all of your finances in order, your bookkeeping, 13-week rolling cash flow, all of that kind of stuff, your lifetime value of your cut, all of the numbers mm -hmm. are clean. And then the fourth piece is a meticulous exit plan. And everybody's, oh, all the gurus, the greatest exit plan is the great continuity plan. Because yeah. they heard that from some other idiot somewhere yeah. else. No, a great exit plan is a great exit plan. Yeah. It doesn't mean you ever have to exit your business. It doesn't mean you have to go that route. But if you build your business to be sold to the best buyers on the planet, okay, Mm -hmm. Every other exit is available. Yes. Because by the time you've built it to exit, now your finances are clean, which means your profitability is optimized, mm -hmm. right? You have your relationship to your customers built in such a way that it's not dependent on you. It means it's systemized. You, you have your, your exit plan built out and in place. Okay. And you have, so relationship to your bit and, and there's one that I'm missing, sorry. But anyways, so you have those four things in mind. You have a bit a team that's in place that you don't, you're not needed. You can go and come as you want. You can go start another business. You can go start a charity. You can go yep. sail to seven seas. You can do whatever you want to do because the management thing is placed, yeah, right? Your customers, no customers are predictable. Like it's a, you have that money coming in regardless. Your yep. finances are clean where you are at every given moment. And it's executing along to a, to that meticulous exit plan. And now you can be bought, right? Most people are like, oh, I'm getting tired. I, I'm getting worn out. I want to sell this thing. Yeah. And then it takes three years to sell it and you never sell, right? Less than 7% of businesses that are put on the market ever sell yeah. because they don't know how to make their business look like an asset. Look, Private equity firms are the best in the business because they get the best returns in the marketplace. Yeah. They they beat Bitcoin, they beat uh, crypto, they beat real estate, they beat the stock market, they beat everybody. 
Yeah. And it's because they're investing in small and mid-sized companies, yep. the most dependable people on the face of the planet, the best relationships to their employees, the best relationships to their customers. They're investing in that. Yep. And so when they're, when you know that they're getting those kind of returns, if your company is not aligned with those things, that means that your longevity is at risk. Yep. That you're more than likely going to experience an involuntary exit. <laughs> yeah. So built to exit is custom tailored exits that are built exact. Keith Cunningham, right? The real rich dad in the rich dad, poor dad books. Yes. So he writes about his rich dad. His rich dad is Keith Cunningham. Keith Cunningham has been a mentor of mine for many years, sat on his council for about a decade. And he has these funny sayings. And one of them is that business is not a bathrobe. One size does not fit all. If somebody is selling you a way to fix your business that fixes everybody's businesses, they're full of shit. Yeah. They're full of shit. You it's have expensive. to custom tailor. Now there's some systematic things that can be built in. There's some repetitive things. There's some things that are exigent ac analysis. across all businesses, but the exit is as different as the 8 billion people that are walking the earth. Yeah. Because each and every business owner wants something different. They want a different number. They want a different house. They want a different travel. They want different, they have different amounts of kids. They have, it's different. Yeah. So what we do is we custom tailor those exits and then put exactly the strategy and the blueprint in place for them to be able to do it. I love it. That, the last thing that I'll tell you, you asked what I learned and, and what I will tell you is that most business coaches and consultants, and I don't do this to disparage, I want to help this group of people as well. Yeah. But most of them, let's equate it to building a house. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the most important hire in your mind? What's the most important hire before you build your house? I would say whoever is the architect. Architect. Yeah. Bingo. Very few people get that right. Congratulations. Okay. So it's the architect. Yeah. Why? Because they're going to have to take your vision and custom tailor, right? The, the build. Yeah. <laughs> the house. Yeah. For you to be, to, for it to be what you want it to be for the, your 3.2 kids or your yeah. one dog or whatever it is, it's going to be custom tailored to you. And that architect has a, uh, an understanding of all the trades, yep. the coordination, the schedules, the product, the financing, the relationship between all of the moving parts. They're now, right they're there. not going to be in there with a hammer. No. They're not going to be in there with a paint roller. Okay. But what you will not do is go to your plumber and say, hey, what about my, what about my, my electricity? You're yeah. not going to do that. You're not going to say, hey, I want to modify the pool in the backyard, Mr. Painter. Can you come down and sit? Look, can, you're not going to go no. to your flooring guy and say, hey, can you make me a set of plans for my dream house? Yeah. Not that those trades are definitely needed, but they're not the architect. And when and you're hiring somebody to work with your business, you need a ever loving architect. And what out there are painters and plumbers of the yeah. business world trying to be an architect. I want them to come and be trained as an architect. We train yeah. architects. We train them, whether that's somebody that they want trained in their own business or whether they want to work with one of our certified people or whatever it is, we train architects. That's the most important hire you're ever going to have. And they're That's never the, going to put their hands on your business. They're never going to come in and sit down and go through receipts with you. Yep. A CPA coming in and hiring somebody that used to be a CPA. Now they're a business consultant. They're going to be good at the numbers. Yeah. They're not going to be good at operations. They're not going to be good at revenue generation. They're not going to be good at lead generation. They're not going to be good at, at the culture building. They're not going to be good at a lot of stuff. Yeah. They're not a consultant. They're not an architect. They're the painter of your numbers. <laughs> yeah. it, that is the best way I've ever heard that described. I'm not just saying that. That's Thank you. incredible. I love yeah, that. A lot of years, brother. A yeah. lot of years. <laughs> you make simple. It's funny, right? Simplicity is the greatest complexity is when you can um, describe it simply. And it's yeah. just because I've watched this industry. 
I hired before I became known as a consultant and the architect in building businesses. Before that, I hired consultants. Yeah. And I watched them come in and I would pay high dollar guys that were great marketing. And I would pay the upstarts because blah, they just came out of college. And every single time they would walk in, they had one set plan that they did for every business. I would pay them the money. They would piss off my employees or scare them or piss off my customers or scare them. Yeah. It really very rarely did it ever. Like when I would hire a painter and say, hey, I need help with my books and brought them in to help with my books, then that worked. Yes. But as far as an architect, I never found a consultant that was an architect. Not one time. I agree with that. When I was running my businesses, my brick and mortar companies, my thousand person business, the, I, I couldn't find them. And mostly because they're busy building their own companies. I was just going to say that. They're not going to help you or they can't help you because they're busy doing what they need to do for their firm. And I do that. Like I have my wife and I have lots of businesses together, right? We own several different types of companies. We're buying companies all the time. And so we're still in the game, but building built to exit is a mission for me. I want the, I want our consultants and our business coaches to be the best in the world. Why? Because I'm getting asked to go to foreign countries now to learn the way that I do these things, right? And when you empower merchants, which is my real family, because I'm a merchant at heart, I'm always going to be a merchant. And, and when we can empower them, we take back the world. Yeah. We are dealing with a very small group of people right now in the world yep. who are dividing us along party lines and along these different things. And they've got us there was a, a great movie that, that came out. I don't, you probably saw it. It was with Robert Redford called The Castle. Yep. Yeah. And in there, there's the scene where he's out in the yard and, and or the, he's watching the yard. And he goes, you want to see how easy it is to manipulate humans? And he goes, he called down. He goes, take away all the basketballs except for one. Yep. And guess what happened? Still there was fighting. a brawl because they took away all the basketballs. And that's what this group of people that are deathly afraid of um, decentralized power, there's no greater form of freedom. There's no greater form of decentralization. There's no greater form of humanity at its best than small and mid-sized companies. I absolutely agree. We, change, we have the impact that changed so much, and I don't think any of us realize it. We don't, it, because... Yeah. We don't, we honestly, I, I said this from stage in Dallas, Texas, with about 5,000 people in the audience. And I said it from stage. I said, you know what? The reason, and it was just full of patriots because it's Democrats, Republicans, just people that see what's going on. And they're like, this is all bullshit. And, and I said, you know what? Here's the problem. We don't like each other. We do. It's not that we dislike each other. We like our people and we don't, we're not activists. We're not out marching and burning down buildings and doing all that kind no. of crap to be paid in division makers. We have our family, we have our business, and that keeps us damn busy and out of other people's businesses. And we come together around an election every four years, and then we go back to our thing. But for the most part, we're like, stay off my grass, people. Correct. Le leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. And we're and good. I wish, I, yeah, I wish you the best. Right. But that's not where we are in history. Correct. We have to come together. The merchants, the entrepreneurs, the business owners, the business coaches, the business consultants, we have to put aside all of this stuff and help each other. That's what Built to Exit was done and why it was built and why I just spent nine months rebranding. Like the website's going to launch, I think this Tuesday or something. Right now it's built to exit.biz if people want to go there, but it's not what it is that's going to happen when we upload the new, the proper website, but it's gorgeous, man. I've never spent this much time on a brand mm -hmm. because it's my next mission. It's not my it. next business. It's my next mission. I love that. There's a difference. People don't understand how you say things and the verbiage you use matters. It does. Not a business. It's a mission. Yep. Yeah, it is a mission. And because at the end of the day, a centralized where we are headed you can see it. It's not new. No. It, you can see it. It happened in Russia. It happened. Just watch the Tetra, right? The Tetris movie, right? 
Just watch the Tetris movie. You'll see what happened in, in, in Russia. Yeah. Or what's another good one? Ag have you ever seen Agenda and Agenda yeah. 2? Yeah, yeah, of course you have. Yeah. I don't even know why I asked. But look at Venezuela. Like there, there are country after country. What happens, what happened in Venezuela is they, they find the merchants and they kick them. They either kill them, put them in prison or uh, exile them. Yeah. And so now all your production, your brain, your heart, all of it gets kicked out of the country because the person in charge, they want all the money. And that yeah. works for a few years, but it doesn't, it's not sustainable because you kicked out the producers. Yeah, right? they starve. The population starves. And right here in America, you're going to end up working for and begging for a paycheck from people like Amazon who are trying to roboticize everybody's job. And you're going to, or you're going to end up begging from a centralized government. That yeah. is slavery at worst, indentured servitude at best. You want to keep this country free. You want to keep the world free. You want to keep it free for your children. You do business with other small business owners. But Jason, I can't wait four days for my toilet paper to come in the mail. Right? I can't get yeah, off yeah. my lazy ass and go down to the, a local store where it's going to be my local things, paying for my local schools and my local streets yeah. and all that other kind of stuff. It's about convenience. Okay. Okay. It's, a, it's like any war. Pick one. Uh, All you're many, doing is saying, here's the bullet, Mr. Going to kill me. Yeah. That's what we're doing by doing business with these disingenuous, unethical capitalist companies in the world that are tied Absolutely. together with corrupt business or co politicians. Yeah. Because they're all getting kickbacks. Think about this. How many local youth teams in your neighborhood has Amazon sponsored? Right. I could tell you none. Right. How many things have you done for your local community? Yeah. We'd be here for the next two hours, right? Buy tubas because the high school yeah. needs tubas. You get, you're doing all of that stuff because it's the money the is right localized yeah, and decentralized from a government, like a centralized government. And that's, so that's my fight brother is that. the built to exit community growing. And obviously we have content and we have training methodology and ways that people can speed up their process. But if you do nothing more like, there's, we do this, the podcast, like I was saying, every Saturday yeah. on Twitter at the J Cisneros, where people can come and hang out. And I would say 50 to 60% of the people haven't ever purchased a thing from me. And that's okay. Like, I, that's fine. They're coming, they're listening. I'm giving more value in 45 minutes than what they're paying $20,000 to some of these idiot gurus for. Yeah. For free. They go to YouTube and they go to the Chairman Project podcast with Jason Cisneros. You watch those series of videos. It's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars to your business for free. I know. Right? It's the community. We have to band together. That's what Built to Exit's all about. I love it. What, guys, please make sure you're following that community. Jason, if there's ever anything I can do for that community. Yep. Or even just be a small part of it. Just show up, brother. Show up. I'd love for you to come up, have a conversation. Cause it's like I said, it's like a radio show. Yeah. It's like the old clubhouse, right? I switched over to Twitter when they did all their communist crap that they did on clubhouse. So now we do it on Twitter, which is owned by a, a free speech advocate and Elon Musk. I, I love, I don't know I if the technology is not as good as clubhouse, but who cares? Like Doesn't... I'm supporting Elon. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I don't even like the cyber truck. I actually hate the cyber truck. It's the only so reason why I would can it's ugly. <laughs> it's ugly. I, I want to support them. I don't know if I want to support them that bad. I, I'm going to keep the TRX for now. Look, yeah. You don't have <laughs> to love a hundred percent about, about somebody that you're dealing Like you would hang out with me and then you're like, Oh, Jason's cool in 80%, but this other 20%, he's a complete asshole. But we're human. That's supposed human. to be the experience. That's it. That's it. We're supposed to get along. We're supposed to support each other. And you know what? Here's the cool thing, right? We're seeing American civilians right now go hard for each other Yep. in the Carolinas and Georgia and Florida where, when the federal government is intentionally just turning away, saying, no, there's no money. We sent it. We're sending it all to other countries. Yep. That's part of this. Right. And it's very that is the one thing I will say that is coming out that is actually decent. We're seeing people unite. We're seeing people come together and just do the right things by each other. And I was seeing it on a national level. And I, I love seeing that. I wish it didn't take this to do that. I, it shouldn't be some epic disaster. Yeah. 
but I do see that more and more and it is very inspiring. They're good. And I think in general, we like each other. I think yeah. racism died many years ago. I think I that all of this stuff, like nobody cared when like on MASH, the show where there was a transgender guy, he was like actually one of our favorite things. He was a, a cross dresser or whatever they called him back in the day. I just don't think people care what other people do in their private life. It's when it gets politicized and shoved down our throat. You can't make me think anything. I can't make you think anything. I can't, it's, I view it as you come to my house, you respect my rules. I come to your house, I'll respect your rules, right? I come in and I go to your house and I go, I don't, I hate your flag. But where did I get the right to come into your house and say, I hate your flag? Yeah. I don't, right? It's common decency to say, oh, I like that flag. Maybe wouldn't put it in my house, but I love your flag, by the way. You know that. But, I know. But I'm just saying, <laughs> that's what I think a lot of people have gotten into the, I can come in your house and no. trash everything that you have on the walls and what you're eating and how you live your life and you have to take it. That's not America. It doesn't work that way. No, yeah. it doesn't work that way. And that's why we have the second amendment. Yeah, you're right. And it's get, not, yeah, you're right. The, it's not for Get hunting. the hell out of my house. It's not for hunting. I can promise you that. Not with all the military age males coming over across the border right now. It's not good. I think to your point, you and I, before we got on camera, right? It's what do we have to look forward to? And I believe all of this happened at probably the perfect time because there's still enough people that remember that people sacrifice for us to be able, it's a sacrifice and then it becomes our duty to hand that on to the next generation. Yeah. Our generation has been handed a challenge. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge we find ourselves in right now, right? I That's why I would risk every dollar and then some of everything that I've made to make sure that my kids grow up in freedom. Yep. And we have, and if it would have gone another five years, I think it, this company or not this company, but this country would have been herded over a cliff like sheep. There's enough of them that are being herded over that cliff right now. I agree. People I believe that we live in a day and age where we can fight this and fight back for it or against it without blood and bullets for the first time in history. But it's going to take us, the business owners, and the, it's going to take us coming together and going, we're not buying into this red, blue gang color bullshit anymore. Like we're just not participating. But you defund these big companies by doing business with small businesses. You defund the government by voting new people in yep. and we get a new wave of people or communism or Marxism or, or fascism takes over and it's 50 years for us to get back what we had just four years ago. And there will be blood, there will be bullets, there will be death. I don't, yeah. I think we still have a chance to reel back from that. And I think Donald Trump is the answer to that. I agree. Uh, I think the more people wake up, and I do see that. I will say that the amount of people that are coming out against a lot of the things that are being politicized today, whether it's on Twitter, even on Facebook, with, even with the censorship, there's more that I see today than I've ever seen in the past, let's say, five years. Yes. So people are collectively waking up. They are. And they needed, they need, we need to hear from each other. I, whatever happens with Donald Trump, I was born a Democrat, right? And my grandfather, who I loved more than anybody else on the face of the planet, died a Democrat. And what's going on there are good Democrats have been hijacked from the inside by Marxists and communists. Yes. Right. <laughs> and so Donald Trump, to me, is the antithesis of that to fight back, not against Democrats, but against Marxism and, and communism and fascism that has come in the disguise of the wolf, right? I agree. And I think that if it goes too far the other way, I'll fight just as hard against the right. I agree. Because I'm a centrist. And there's things that I believe hard on the left and there's things that I believe hard on the right. But right now, Donald Trump has the greatest positioning and he everybody hates him, therefore I love him. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you right there. I think that most people don't understand, but they're starting to wake up because Elon bought Twitter. Yeah. That you may have, and this might actually be an exaggeration, but you have about a thousand elites. Yeah. Okay. 
those thousand elites, and by the way, most of this is coming from the World Economic Forum and the people associated with that. Mm -hmm. And m a lot of people do not even look. They announce their stuff on the website. It's not like- They've written books about yes, it. Yes, yeah. yes. So this isn't like a, a conspiracy theory. They actually publicly announce it. There's about a thousand of them that have infiltrated government cabinets and certain positions. And what they're doing is they are causing massive amounts of division. It's not just here in the States, it's in Europe, it's everywhere. And all they are doing is conquer, dividing, conquering by division. Yeah. Okay. They want to shake up the left. They want to shake up the right. And if you went back and if you look at some of the things that Trump is speaking and what he is proposing, they are very, a lot of it really is very much in the middle. Yeah. And if you took a Democrat from 20 years ago, and said, hey, Jason, I know you're a Democrat from 20 years ago. This is what the party represents. What would that person say? JFK would be a far right uh, conspiracy nut. Yes. JFK, exactly. the darling of the left, somebody yeah. who I loved and my grandfather loved. And yeah. they, he would be a far right wing nut, as you see with RFK. I have a poster of JFK. Yeah. He's no, a great this man. He's a great lead. Yeah. He's a great it's, man, great idea. We're, I think we're in a good spot. I think that we woke up. Thank God Trump ran when he did. He he did on both sides. He did a lot. He did some real good, which is part of, we we forget because we have it so good in this country yeah. that we have something that's called a civic duty, right? And that civic duty means that you have to be a well-informed, engaged in your community with without the hope of, uh, enrichment. You, it's just, you're giving back to the country that gave to you. Okay. And we have forgotten that until Trump came along and he really woke that up with people calling him a liar yeah. and people starting to do research about the things that he was saying and going, Oh shit, he's not actually lying. This yeah, stuff is right. really true. And so it woke people certainly did for me. I got deeply involved. I'm a, I, I love history. Probably at least three quarters of the books that I read are historical in nature because I think history teaches us a lot about where we're headed. And, but as far as my civic duty, I wasn't doing much either. Now I've been wildly involved and I will be wildly involved until we get back to a place of relative boredom. Yeah. You know, we're fighting over really important generational thought processes, eliminating the greatest document on the planet with our constitution, eliminating free speech, eliminating the second amendment. We're fighting against some consequential generational bad stuff right now. Yeah. And we need to stand up. And I, like I say, my, my family's the business community. Yeah. That's my okay. family. And so anybody that's out there, like I say, you don't ever have to buy anything from me. Just come hang out. Like, yeah come do business with the other people that show up on the podcast. Come, come hang out at some of the events that we do, whatever it is, but get better at your craft, make more money, build your company to exit and just do business with other people. That's what's going to keep us free. I love that. And also teach your people, right? One of the greatest, I believe responsibilities, I don't want to say obligations. Okay. Because one of the greatest responsibilities an entrepreneur has is to his team and the community that they serve. Yep. And I don't think people realize if you teach the same principles that you believe in to your team and they impact the community with those principles, you are absolutely making more of a difference than you'll ever realize. Yeah. And that's why it does start with us. And, and hopefully it doesn't end with us. Hopefully we do what we need to do to stand up and support each other and take back control. Amen. Well, I love you, brother. I'm proud of you. Like I say, very few people, everybody hates child trafficking, but you stepped up and you and your boys scratched out some checks for a couple of things that we were working on. And I'm, I'll always honor you and consider you a brother because you actually did something about it. So thank you. Likewise. Thank Thanks you for your me. show. Congratulations on your show and keep doing what you do. Appreciate it, Jason. Thank you so much. And uh, one more time, where can everybody find you? It's Saturday mornings, nine to 1030. Yep. On Twitter. Yeah, that's on Twitter or X now X. <laughs> and handles at the J Cisneros because I got kicked off of Twitter back in the day of the communists. Yeah. <laughs> for saying things that now have been proven to be true, but it's at the J Cisneros. That's where you find the show. It's pinned at the top all the time. The replay from last week 
And then that gets turned into a video because I shoot it in my studio. That gets turned into a video and put on Spotify and YouTube and stuff under the Chairman Project podcast. Okay. And then Jason Cisneros dot com. You can see my name up here, but Jason Cisneros dot com. And you can find all the other stuff that I'm involved in from there. All right. Thank you so much for coming on, man. I, we, we could wrap for two hours, but I appreciate it. We, yeah. we could go and, much uh, longer than that. <laughs> yeah. I love you, man. Love you too. Bye. Bye.